What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the Scale News Update. Now, if you're familiar with the show, this is where we talk about the news topics that happened in the scale world of RC over the past week. If you enjoy the Scale News Update, hit the like button. Let's jump into this week's topics. First up for this week, Axial released the brand new Basecamp Builders Kit. This is an SCX10 3 based builders kit. This is replacing the SCX2 builders kit with something that's much more current. This has metal bodied shocks and metal pan hard link. It does have straight axles like the SCX10 one, but unlike the base camp RTR that it shares a name with. Axial has always named the platform after the body that's been on them. Therefore, using the base camp name with one that doesn't come with the base camp body is a little odd. Plus the difference of it having straight axles versus portal axles like the other base camp, a little bit different. But it does share the same LCXU transmission that came in the base camp RTR. However, this one comes with the new dig unit. It only comes with a 12.3 inch wheelbase link set in there as opposed to the SCX10 II, which came with multiple wheelbase options. Overall though, it's just a great base for a custom build. No body, wheels, tires, or bumper, just the bare minimum, get you what you need to get that starting point and you can build from there. If you're interested in picking one of these up, they're currently on pre-order. You can find them both on Amain and Horizon's website. Check those out. I've linked to both of them in the description below and I'll also include links to the rest of today's stories. Next, Traxxas released the new-ish TRX4 Sport High Trail. This, like the name would suggest, is a new version of the high trail, but with the sport platform, meaning that it doesn't come with the two speed or selectable lockers. No extra frills really, just bare bones, four by four truck lifted up. It does share the exact same TRX4 sport body that we've seen for however many years now. However, they did update it to the clipless body system, which is a nice benefit. It comes with the rear adventure rack setup that you saw come with the TRX4 Sport Builders Kit. But beyond that, it's pretty much gonna be the high trail that you've seen in so many options so far. Lifted up, 2.2 wheels and tires. Pretty straightforward beyond that. Just aimed at the people who want a big, tall truck. Nothing wrong with that. You're probably not going for all out rock crawling performance, but if that's the style you want, those are the trails you want, you're gonna hit mud holes, whatever it is, I'm sure that's going to be a lot of fun. Cross RC just released a promo video for the T-Rex 10x10. Now we talked about the 10x10 when it was initially teased or kind of released at the time. This thing is absolutely massive. Two front steering axles, three rear steering axles, all independent suspension all the way around. Again, all, steering on all of those axles makes this thing look somewhat nimble in the video. Granted, it is larger than most people's workbenches, but the promo video beyond just showing, you know, a, what the truck is or can do was like a cinematic storyline, post-apocalyptic or the middle of the apocalypse, one or the other. In there, in there, they have a scene where they have actually lit RC car tires on fire and then drive through them. The first time I've seen that in an RC car video, but if you wanna see the full video, I'll link to where you can watch it below. It's on the, the Chinese YouTube, Billy Billy. So if you're interested in watching the full feature length version of the video, it'll be linked in the description below. If you're interested in buying this, if you're interested in buying, if you're interested in buying the T-Rex, I haven't seen it hit any of the U.S. distributors at this point, but I do believe you can buy it on like Alibaba or a couple of places like that. I think that it's up around that two thousand dollar mark. And on the opposite end of that spectrum, WPL released a new one. This is the WP14. This is the Desert Patrol. This is very similar to other vehicles kind of like this that we've seen. I believe Tamiya has one or two this style, but this is WPL sized and WPL priced. So a little bit smaller and very inexpensive. Comes in two different camo prints. One's a desert camo, one's the typical green camo. It does have the kind of cool trailing arm rear suspension and it's super basic. WPL stuff is just super inexpensive and you get what you pay for, but they do kind of cool looking stuff from time to time. I don't think this one's too bad. 
The 26ers from Red Cat Racing are shipping now. These are available in four different options. One set has three different wheel faces. These are more like a billet style wheel. You get the gold or chrome in those finishes. You get the wheel hoops, and then you get all three of the billet style wheel faces. You can kind of choose which one you want. And depending on which side you put it in the barrel, you can adjust the offset with them. It comes with a specific center cap for each wheel face style also. So a very complete set. Tires are already pre-mounted on the barrels as well. The tires are just a solid rubber tire all the way around. There's no foam or anything like that because there's just not really any room. And again, you can get those in chrome or gold. And then they also have a spoke version. Now the spoke version is just the spoked wheels and tires. These come also in gold or chrome, but when you buy that set, you don't get three different wheel face options, just these multi-piece spoke design that look perfectly realistic. The style on them is great. So if you've got a project that could take some big wheels or you've got a low rider that you want to turn into a not so low rider, check those out on Red Cat Racing now. And I suppose you'll also find them at all of the Red Cat dealers very shortly. ISDT is running deals on their chargers and ESC. ISDT is running this special for about a month. So from about this time in June to about this time in July. And they have a ton of their charger and balancers on there. And this is all through Amazon currently. So you can go on there and see the huge list of them that they've got on sale, as well as that ISDT 70 ESC. This is a nice little inexpensive ESC that comes with a Bluetooth module for easy programming. Their app is nice. Overall, it's just a very smooth setup. So if you're looking for an inexpensive ESC that functions well, definitely worth checking out. Again, all of these are on Amazon and most of them are available for like one day shipping. So I have the D6, I believe. I think they have the Q8, which is very similar to it. It's an awesome charger to take out in the field. I'll plug like a larger XT60 equipped battery into it as the power supply and then charge my smaller packs off of it. So I can charge anywhere, especially if I'm comping and have little packs, charge all day off of one other pack and it's good to go. Definitely worth checking out. If you're interested, put a link to where you can see all the options listed in one place, linked below. AGF RC, who is a servo OEM. They make servos for some other brands that you've probably seen before, but they posted up something a little different. Their new specific edition servos, not special, specific. They made a whole graphic that says specific edition and they lasered all the servos, specific edition. <laughs> something got missed in the spell check. But if you want to hold on to a piece of limited specific edition <laughs> merchandise, maybe go see if those are still available. Pick yourself up a splatter anodized specific edition. The end of last week, Proline put up a teaser for some new wheels that appears that are coming and it says something heavy, which would lead me to believe that these new wheels are probably made out of brass and painted black. Nothing else to go on beyond that. I believe that the tires are something that we've already seen before. The body is something we've seen before. Pretty much all it leads me to think, unless it's just some sort of inner wheel weight system. But I suppose we'll find out pretty soon on this. If you're interested, you can follow the ProLine Facebook page. Wait for more information to pop up. And of course, we'll cover it on the next Scale News. This week, RC Four Wheel Drive, bringing the whole puzzle together. Last week, we talked about the canoe mount that they released for the VS410 roof rack system that they had. This week, they released the canoe. Kind of feels like they put the cart before the horse on that one, but if you're into canoeing, which there was a couple people in the comments last week that said that they were and said that they just didn't like the scale of available canoes, right up your alley. Now you have the perfectly scaled canoe for your very specific canoe mount. Those of you who've been waiting for the Killer Bodies Jeep Gladiator, the bodies are now in stock in the US. So if you'd like to pick one of those up and not have to wait for the shipping to come from overseas, they're now available. This is a very in-depth body, so many pieces. And overall, the size is a little small. It's a 12.3 inch wheelbase, but to get a Gladiator to scale to that wheelbase, definitely had to shrink it down a little bit. You're gonna have the tires outside the fenders, not exactly giving you that OEM plus look. It's gonna look like a full width axle underneath there. Although in the photos, 
killer bodies is showing that the tires look pretty proportioned and underneath there and that's going to be on their mercury chassis which is supposedly coming here before long so whether you just want the body set to put it on your own build or if you want to get the body ready so when the mercury chassis is released you can drop it on there also an option link to that body is available below the j concepts corvairs are in stock now you're just been holding off waiting to build that corvair crawler act now supplies are limited these could go fast jump at the opportunity to buy your very own corvair body from j concepts and they they probably they actually probably will sell out quickly fms paired up with fair rc again to offer the fms rock hobby magnum in the rusted finish this is a patinaed looking version of that Magnum 118th scale pickup truck. But the paint job, at least to me, in my untrained patinaed eye, looks pretty good. I think that they did a pretty decent job with this one. We've seen other rusted or rust bucket versions of vehicles offered before that didn't look very convincing, didn't look very good. I'd say this is on the opposite side of that line. I think they did a pretty good job. This little truck isn't performance oriented. It's got, you know, tiny tires, poor approach and departure angle, but it looks fairly scale. It's got that standard 118th scale solid axle platform underneath. You're not gonna be absolutely killing some off-road terrain with this thing, but if you like the way that it looks and you wanna drive it in some off-road areas or even indoors, it's worth taking a look at. For you Axial UTB18 owners, that Furitec titanium cage for that platform is available stateside now also this is 150 bucks and it is supposedly a titanium cage it's got a very capra style overall they didn't change things up too much there so you're still gonna be able to use your factory shocks and some of the you know mounting of batteries things like that and still kind of maintain a, a somewhat stock style ownership experience but you will have a true metal cage to work with and body panels so if you'd like that style over the plastic stock one then you'll be able to order this one and get it in just a few days. This Wednesday's live stream takeover, we're going to have Randall from Axial Adventure on to discuss the release of the Axial Base Camp Builders Kit. So if you'd like to hear some insight and behind the scenes on the release of a new kit like that, come join us 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. And then Friday Night Live. Last week I did some studio cleanup and it was very productive. This week I have plenty of projects that are kicked off that I need to get some work done on. So I'm sure we'll do that, answer some questions while we're at it, just do some general BSing. So come join us then as well, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. Last week I asked you guys, what was your impulse buy threshold? Where was that dollar amount where you just, yeah, I could, you can click buy, but that's it. That's the top limit. Answers all over the place. Some people, which can include me at times, really love the research part of things. The researching phase of a purchase is sometimes as much fun as the purchase itself. And I'm 100% guilty of that at times. But this week, I wanna know, what was your favorite RC purchase? Whether it's a full vehicle, a used parts lot, a brushless motor setup, what one RC purchase was your favorite? Love reading your guys' comments. Favorite part of the scale news update. With that though, as always, thanks again for watching the scale news every Tuesday. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the video, subscribe if you're not already, hit the notification bell so you see the videos as soon as they get uploaded, and once again, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.